Being in a loving relationship is an amazing experience. When you add a baby to the mix, it can change things up for the better or for the worse. I've been a mum of three, I've been in a loving relationship, and I'm in my 20th year of marriage. I've had some regrets, I've had some resentments, I've had to make some changes along the way, and these changes helped me navigate my way to being harmoniously a wife and a mother at the same time. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ngozi. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Click on that little notification bell so you never miss an upload. On this channel, we talk about love, marriage, dating, parenting, uh, pregnancy, any trending topic that affects our community at any given time, we'll talk about it. Today, we're talking about relationships and the introduction of babies into the relationships and how it can negatively or positively impact your union with your loved one, you know, your spouse. Now, I've been away for over two weeks. <laughs> You'll notice that I haven't uploaded in exactly two weeks. It's been the Easter holiday. I hope you had an amazing time. Um, and I gave 100% of my time to my family. Uh, and now I am back. So now we're speaking about um, what it is like to be a first time mum or even second, third time round. It, it really depends. But being a new mum and navigating a relationship at the same time. Now, when you have a child, you are only 10 months barely prepared right because of pregnancy for the arrival of this child and unlike any other career in the world and i'm sure you've heard this before being a parent being a mom is the hardest job in the world but unlike any career in the world whether you're a doctor a nurse uh, a teacher a mechanical engineer a computer analyst a lawyer whatever you might be you need to be trained you need to be educated for years and over time your workload is a portion to you based on your years of experience. It's not the case when you have children. You are going into the hardest job in the world with no experience whatsoever. So that's the picture, that's the scenario. So what I want to say first out the gate is, be kind to yourself. You're never going to be the greatest mom ever as soon as you have a child. It comes over time. And to be honest, your children will always throw out curveballs all along the way as they age up. So you're always going to be on the back foot. You're always going to be a step behind with every new development with your kids. And while you're doing that, you're having to navigate, you know, your relationship with your spouse, your, your partner, your husband, whoever. Yes. So that's the first thing. You have to be forgiving of yourself. You have to encourage yourself you have to be kind to yourself and understand that it is a new role and you're not equipped to right out the gate know what to do and how to handle the situation I'm a mother of three and I'm going to speak about my last child so I have my first daughter then I have a son and then five years later I have a baby girl now my son was a very quiet sleepy wonderful baby my first daughter she took me to the cleaners, she wouldn't sleep, but it wasn't as bad as my last child. Maybe it's a combination of my age when I had my last child versus when I had my first. Um, and also the combination of the fact that my son in the middle was the perfect baby. So I was underprepared when five years later <laughs> I had my daughter. Now my little girl wouldn't sleep. And as you know, an iCard should pop up in the top right hand corner of your screen, taking you to multiple videos where I've spoken about having my kids, C-sections, PCOS, uh, fibroid operations, a hysterectomy, you name it, done it all. <laughs> so um, yes, I have three children. And this last child, also a C-section, I came back from the hospital and you will understand if you, if you haven't been, if you haven't had your child yet, then I hope that it's a natural process for you. Uh, uh, and if it is not, then of course, you know, C-section might be the way that your surgeons choose to go. Um, but the thing is that either way, whether you have a child normally or you have the child through some kind of intervention, you're going to need lots and lots of rest when you come back home. And as you've heard it said, it takes a village to raise a child. But this video is actually for individuals who don't have a village. 
most of us don't have a village. Everything presented on TV and social media and in magazines presents that perfect idea of having a child, having your mother come over, having your sisters come over, you know, aunties and, and friends and family surrounding you and giving you that love. And, you know, the village comes in and supports you on that journey. I'll have you know that that is the exception, not the norm. And in my case, I had no village. <laughs> I had absolutely no village. I did it all alone. It took a toll on me. I had postnatal depression. I had depression. I've been through a few, a few, um, you know, turns around the roundabout with this journey called parenting and motherhood and being a wife and <laughs> especially in a foreign country because yes, I was born in the United Kingdom, but I am still Nigerian. I still, you know, grew up in Africa and then returned here. Um, and so I don't have access to that village of individuals who can help me you might say what about friends no everyone is very busy and occupied if you live out here in the western world you'll understand that people don't have time to give there just isn't enough time <laughs> in the world there isn't enough time for individuals to get through their responsibilities in a given day not to mention you know leaving their responsibilities and coming to support you and if you do get any kind of help the bulk of it is still left for you to handle but I'm being told you need a village so I didn't have that village and most of you watching wouldn't have a village yes so I come back with my child from the hospital and it's a full-on c-section yes and I've been discharged I've spent two nights in hospital after two nights you're out um, and I come home to a house and two other children to take care of isn't it um, and basically to run life as it has always been and my husband is gonna go off to work you know so your home and your husband is in the lead in that area and you happen to be in the lead with your newborn baby and it so happened that I was still repeating over the last few years of the other two kids still repeating the same mistake where I wanted to impress him I wanted him to go on and go to work I've got this and still make sure the house was clean still make sure the kids were bathed still make sure the homework was done I was even cutting the grass still make sure the food is cooked nothing about the standard at which the house was running was going to be any different I was making my girls hair, I was taking them to the park, everything was still running at full pace. Now with the arrival of the third child, I couldn't keep it up and this is where I say I made some changes so that I could stay in love with my husband uh, and still be a mom and not be resentful. And I said to my husband, I'll stay in the master bedroom, I'll take care of baby, you go on and stay in the guest bedroom. And he was really happy, you know, he's got to go to work and so on and I'll just take care of this, don't worry. You still want to impress your husband and you know, this is where it starts to get very complicated. So night one, my baby wouldn't sleep. When I say to you, if you're a first time mom, that babies don't sleep, they don't sleep. And don't let the YouTube videos fool you. Some videos work, but they work for the moment. Have a look at this video. A baby's cry has been voted one of the worst sounds on earth. Making it stop is the holy grail of parenting. Here we have a, a crying baby. Enter Dr. Robert Hamilton. 23 million people have seen him perform a miracle. I fold his right arm like this, and then his left arm in front, and then very gently hold his little bottom and gently rock him up and down, just like that. Is this magic? That baby just stopped crying. So while it looks simple to take a baby, bend them in a particular position, and move them around in a nice, you know, a fetal way, and they'll stop crying and it's this great miracle, it won't work when you're trying to go to sleep at night. So unless you're going to do that, standing up in the middle of the night, of course your baby's not going to cry. Just showing me how to stop a baby from crying is great. I also need to know how to stop the baby from crying, lie them in the bed and go and get some sleep. That's a whole nother story. So my baby wouldn't stop crying, of course. As Soon as I took my baby to myself, she would, you know, snuggle in and calm down. But as soon as I put her down, as soon as I just moved her off me, she'd scream and grab onto me. Ah! Like, no, don't you dare. This went on for three nights. Now, five days in from having an operation, I, did, I, I, I wasn't doing very well. I was pushed to my limit. I needed some rest, I needed some sleep. And so I said to my husband, 
called him in the middle of the night from the guest room and I said, you've got to come in here, you've got to help me. That's the first thing. You need to get your husband involved. So I've seen a few videos on YouTube and they say, well, you shouldn't have to ask your husband. He should take the initiative. What do you mean? We shouldn't have to ask. You're right, you shouldn't have to ask. We shouldn't have to ask about so many things in life, but you have to. You know, we always say that goes without saying, but these days you've got to figure it out. It clearly doesn't go without saying. They're not going to show up. They're not going to turn up unless you say something. You've got to speak. Again, I've also seen in comments, men commenting and saying, we're not psychic. And you're, they are right. They are not psychic. No one wants to be involved with a child who's screaming day in, day out. They're going to want their sleep. It's a normal reaction. That being said, you as a mom have a senior position in the role of parenting a newborn because, you know, the babies come out of you and you're focused and, you know, you've got everything going. I mean, right from the hospital, his time with the child is limited and yours is full on. They pop in, a few visiting hours, they're gone. You've got to know and understand your baby. They need some food or they're not dry. They need to be cleaned. You're advanced already by days, right? But, um... It's not the same for your husband and they're moving away or your partner as the case may be and they're a little bit more distant from the role than you are so while you are right i don't have to ask for them to do that uh, and i shouldn't have to say that and they should take the initiative that's okay but you can be right and lose your mind years later that's the first thing you're going to have to note get your husband involved stop assuming or trying to impress him or showing him how hard you work. You have to get him involved, else you become very bitter, you become very irritated, you'll become resentful. Um, and while some people say, well, you know, he's gone off to work, you're working 24 seven, you don't get breaks, you don't get um, to go to bed, you don't get to leave the workplace, you are the workplace you're breastfeeding from yourself you're bathing you're the bed you're everything to this child and it's it's like no other job in the world so he needs to when he comes back from work get on board asap don't for a second think that you're impressing your husband and that's going to get you anywhere they will take more and more of a backseat to the situation and you'll get more and more frustrated you've already set a standard and now you can't change it and so with this third child i got my husband involved baby one baby two i'm sorry they're not going to take the initiative. So I got him involved and I said, listen, I need help. I haven't slept, I, I, I'm not doing well. You know, the need to impress them goes out the window. Listen, if we're going to have a fight, we're going to have a fight, but I need to get some sleep. And you have to get to that point and you have to communicate in a loving way what your needs are. And you have to constantly press for it. The same way a supervisor would in a workspace. You have to constantly remind them of what is required. Or you can just be right and say, well, I shouldn't have to ask and <laughs> figure out how that's going to work out for you. So he decided then that he would take the evening all the way up to midnight and I will take the midnight all the way up to morning and he would have been gone about 7 a.m. in the morning back to work and I would have that baby who's been awake all night with my other two children, school running and whatnot and cleaning the house and taking care of everything full on. No village, but I began to do a lot better. I began to feel the help. I began to see that he appreciated the hard work that I was dealing with, you know, because he was doing it. And this baby would scream and scream and scream, blue murder, scream. It's profound to see the way these babies cry, especially in the nighttime, you think they hate you or something. It's, it's, it's really bad. And one of the nights I called 111. It's a health service, emergency service. And before they could even get through the preliminary questions, the lady says, is the child in the background the reason you're calling she says i'm just going to send an ambulance out something is wrong if you're saying this child has been crying for the past three four hours something is clearly wrong so i open the door they walk in and it's like oh what's going on and they put the lights on and she just stops crying looks at them smiles ha 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 i thought what and i said to them I, I didn't even call you, I just called 111 and the lady, the lady on the phone, she did say and they said no, they, they, got, they, they got the message as well that this is a surprise but the lady of the two then advised and said to me, keep your house on. She thinks this baby doesn't like the dark so turn on everything, get on with what you need to do and just create 
the night as if it was the day. And that's what I did. So when they left, initially I didn't do that. I turned everything off again and wanted to calm her down and she lost it. She was livid. This child was livid, right? Um, and one thing I want to explain to you about babies who cry this way is that it is a form of a verbal altercation. It's the same effect you have if you're having a full-on verbal altercation with someone. Now multiply that by three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times a day. It's bad for your mental health. People start to deal with postnatal depression um, and so many other things start to unravel as a result. You become agitated all the time. You're always having a buzz. If you've got other kids to take care of like I did, um, you get short with them, you know, stop it. And you, know, you start to change. You're no longer that sweet, nice mum, and you're no longer the sweet, nice wife either. So while I've gone through the hours and the hours of no sleep, do you think I'm going to be available to my husband? Absolutely not. It's not possible. Do you understand? But what you don't realize is that your husband's body never changed. His demands and his needs and his requirements are exactly the same. In fact, the more you're drooling over with milk oozing from your blouse and looking like, you know, you just came out of the child factory, the more attractive you suddenly are to him. And that can be very annoying. So again, have a conversation with your husband. You need to learn to continue to establish clear conversations with your husband. You can never talk too much. If you tell yourself you're talking too much, you're nagging too much, you'll suffer. So go ahead, speak up women, speak up. Tell him what you need, tell him how you feel. Tell him what you might want done around the taking care of the child that will enable you to get the rest and the zen that you need to be able to be there for him in the way that he wants. If you don't do that, you'll end up sleeping with your husband, showing affection, and you hate him. You don't want to do that, okay? So have a conversation. And in doing so, you'll find that if he loves you, he's gonna come along with the process and you'll begin to have a new found love for each other, a healthy respect for one another, seeing how much he cares about what you're going through uh, and seeing him, you know, really making an effort can open up new doors to an experience of love that you never thought possible. It, it's quite an experience to see them come along. So what you want to do is get them on board. In addition to my husband, you know, taking over the first part of the night, at 12 midnight, I'd come down, the whole house would be switched on. I'll do the cooking, the laundry, put her in a car seat, get in the car and go do the grocery shopping, the weekly grocery shopping. I'll get that done, you know, at the main store that operated 24 hours. Um, and she would be awake in that trolley in the supermarket, smiling and cooing at all the aisles and things like that. And, you know, it, it was what it was. Have I got my sleep back? No. Have I got a partner who has supported me through the journey? Yes. As hard as it gets when you have a new child, on board your relationship, you're just gonna do so much better when your spouse is an equal partner in the journey. Do we get enough sleep? No. That little girl still comes into my room. She's 10 years old. It's, it's a quilt. It's not tucked in right. It's, I haven't, I need to drink water. I had a bad dream. We would yell all we want. She's still gonna keep coming into our room. And, um, it doesn't matter now because we're a team. We're a team. It's it's not us against her. It's just we're a team. And I have understood and I have felt that I have gotten, you know, equal support, the support that's required to go through the raising of these babies, right? I know that I wasn't left to it. I know that we've both been on the ball and I really appreciate my husband for that. And he appreciates me <laughs> bringing him on board. Absolutely. It's wonderful to see him say, I can't believe you went through that or, oh, with the first child, I can't believe this is what you experienced and so on. It, it brings things full circle, you know, and you start to appreciate one another. So I wish you all the best with your new arrival and I hope you're prepared. Remember to speak up. Up, remember to bring him on board, stop the impressing game uh, and get ready to face life. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your experiences are, what you've put in place to, to you know, manage the journey, um, especially for those of you who don't have a village, because I'm speaking to those of you who do not have a village. 
thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you again soon in the next video before then have a good morning a good afternoon a good evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you again soon bye